Hi, uh, my name is Hashir Aj, and I want to talk about how to use this uh, COVID-19 tinnitus practice questionnaire for telephone interviews. So this questionnaire basically is designed for you as the practitioner to, if you want to call your patient and uh, to, to, to screen if they have any uh, specific problem, how their tinnitus is impacting on their life, and the uh, psychological impact of the tinnitus as well as any medical red flags so you can actually use this questionnaire online and complete it while you are talking to your patient over phone and uh, and then you simply submit the questionnaire to yourself and you will be receiving um, the, the full uh, of full of the answers that uh, you actually provided on that questionnaire into your mailbox which you can add to your patient's uh, records. And uh, the, the key thing about this questionnaire is that it, it actually will help you to not to miss any important information that you, you want to ask uh, from your patient, uh, like the medical red flags and the, the psychological impact of the tinnitus. Once this is done, uh, then you can actually use the information that is provided here to, uh, to prioritize your patient uh, in terms of offering therapy for them uh, over phone, uh, with video conferencing, or face-to-face -face while once the limitations of the outbreak is over. Thank you very much for using this. Now I'd like to describe how to actually use this questionnaire and where you can find it. So if you go to the website tinnitustherapy.org.uk which is the website of the tinnitus masterclass this is the home page and there is an assessment and management tools if you click on assessment tools it takes you to a page with this covid19 um, questionnaire is there and uh, if you click on this it takes you to the actual questionnaire uh, covid19 and uh, our tinnitus service, triage of patients with tinnitus, hyperacusis, and misophonia using telephone appointments. So here I give you a bit of a background of why this questionnaire is designed and what is the why why uh, and how you actually need to use this. The instructions of how to use this form is given here. Essentially, this is a form for the therapist, for the tinnitus specialist to complete while they are on phone talking to their patients. And then once they submit the form, the form actually will go to their own, to the therapist uh, email um, address that they provide. So then they can copy this into the patient's record. And um, so here I talk about the instructions to use this and also give some, um, some papers for further readings if you were going to, um, to give simple advice to patients and reassurance to them. And uh, here are the basic requirements for a telephone clinic. What are the things that needs to be present so you can actually uh, call your patient. And on the form itself, so um, there are the bits of about the information. You can either use your uh, real name or a pseudo name, a code for the patients or the name, and the email address that you like this form to be sent to. And the questions are whether they have an ear pain, any ear discharge, any balance problem, have they seen ENT or not. So obviously if they say yes to ear pain and the ear discharge and the balance problem, it is very important uh, for them to, to be referred to an ENT, so these are medical red flags if they have not seen ENT yet. Whether they have any hearing uh, difficulties and when they tinnitus started, is the recent, uh, recent thing or they had it for many years and what does it sound like? So there are different uh, boxes that you can uh, add the information to them and um, do, where, where do they hear their tinnitus? This is it something in the center of their head, right ear, left ear? And based on this information that you gather, you can decide um, how to prioritize the patients and what would be the next uh, point of action, if you like. And then we also ask them how loud or strong is their tinnitus uh, in terms of the loudness of it or how much annoying it is. They can, they can choose a number between zero to 10. Basically, you're reading these questions to them and you complete it on your own computer while you're on the phone with them. Is there any um, medical history? Do they have hyperacusis or misophonia? And there are definitions of hyperacusis and misophonia is also provided uh, here. If, they, if the main problem 
is tinnitus, then I wouldn't really go into completing this section uh, regarding hyperacusal misophonia because we want to have the minimum amount of information that is required to be gathered over phone. But if the main problem is misophonia and hyperacusis, then yes, definitely uh, use these questions to assess um, the, the level of uh, management that they currently have for these problems. These problems are uh, from a questionnaire called 4C, uh, which uh, we have designed uh, in our clinics. And um, the questionnaire mainly asking about how confident people are in terms of dealing with the problem um, that they're facing and how confident they are that they can do their day-to-day -day tasks, their day-to-day -day tasks, and how confident they are that they can uh, enjoy their life and uh, how confident they are that they can do all of these things without using any safety-seeking behaviors. Also here a questionnaire for anxiety and depression, a screening questionnaire. So when you, uh, you read the questions and then you click uh, on the answers that they provide, a total number is calculated here for you and uh, scores of four or more indicates possible symptoms of anxiety and depression and then so you know that this person potentially need to be referred for uh, mental health evaluation. Scores of six or more, uh, if they have, then uh, they are more uh, at higher risk of developing suicidal or self-harm ideations and, uh, and it is important to ask further questions about the history of mental health illness and whether they have seen uh, mental health professionals and uh, if they have any uh, suicidal uh, thoughts or ideations and, uh, and based on the answer that they provide and the local protocol that you have in your service then you will um, make appropriate uh, actions and once you got all of the questions you just simply submit this and the report of this will go into your own mailbox which you can use for further management of your patient. Thank you for listening.